Everybody doing good? Yeah, amen. Good to see you. Glad that you are in the house. So glad to worship with you today. Hey, uh, small group leader training is today, uh, I believe at one o'clock. And so if you're thinking, if you ever thought about leading a small group, I just want to put that plug in. Uh, we'd love to have you lead a small group and take people on a journey this fall um, in our small group semester. Also just want to pause just for a moment before I jump into the message. If you've ever thought about taking a missions trip. Maybe it's been your life desire to go on a missions trip. We do one every year. It's not too late. We've got some uh, room available uh, for the uh, one that we always do around the March time frame. And so if you were interested, uh, if you are new to our church, we built a school about five years ago in Ethiopia uh, that has just continued to have to expand. Like we're under construction right now uh, in, in, in expanding um, a new wing just so that we can have more space. It's so all, you know, it's so growing up around in that part of the area that we built in uh, because people are moving wanting their kid to go to that school. And so uh, uh, we, we've actually outgrown, you know, we're, this will be the final on this compound, the final construction, but we've got uh, an opportunity across the way. Uh, this, the school that we built was supposed to get us to eight, grade eight, uh, but we're actually only, only, only going to get to grade four because right now we have about 800 kids and, um, uh, and we can't, you know, the compound can't hold anymore. So um, I, I just want to, if you have ever desired, see uh, one of us, call the office, get some information. We'd love to have you go with us on this trip in March. Uh, it'll change your life forever. Everybody say forever. It's a life-changing experience, and if you've never been on one, uh, I promise you, uh, you would not regret uh, doing it. All right, I'm, I'm very excited today about this series that we're starting. Uh, we're going to have some fun today. Everybody, all right? uh, are you ready for that? Amen? You like the person sitting beside you? Anybody want to get up and move? You, you, you know? Turn to them and say, I'm so lucky to sit beside you. Come on, somebody. Yeah. Mm-hmm. All right. Hey, I'm going to start a series today uh, called, it's, uh, you know, it, it's called Excuse Me, but uh, we're going to talk about excuses. Everybody say excuses, right? Before I get into the message, I just thought that it would be funny. I found some uh, real life excuses that people actually uh, sent in with their children when they went to school uh, for, you know, the kid missing school or whatever, uh, and I thought I'd just share them with you. Is that all right? They're going to put them on the, the screens as well. Here, here's one. Please excuse Lola for being absent. She was sick, and I had her shot. Hmm. That's a little over the top right there. Uh, too much, Mom. Uh, Jimmy has been absent yesterday because he had two teeth taken out of his face. Dear school, here's another one. Please note it. Excuse. Look at that. Excuse John being absent on January 28th, 29th, 30th, 31, 32, and also 33. <laughs> like I've heard of leap year, that's a jump year. Can you know what I mean? It's, right? My daughter is under a doctor's care and should not take PE today. Please execute her. Here's another one. Please excuse Holly from Jim today. Notice Jim, J I M. Mm -hmm. Jim today, she's administrating. Oh, I'm not even, I ain't going there anyway. Mm. <laughs> Kevin was absent from school yesterday because he was playing football. He was damaged in the growing part. <laughs> Here's another one. Please excuse Johnny for being. It was his father's fault. I ain't had nothing to do with it. It was his father's fault. <laughs> Please excuse Jesse from school. He had very loose vowels. A, <laughs> E, right? Please excuse Tommy. Here's another one. I'm done. Please excuse Tommy for being absent yesterday. He had diarrhea and his boots leak. <laughs> I hate it when that happens, don't you? <laughs> that's, that's the worst. How many, by the showing of the hand, would say, you've made some excuses on something in your life? Come on, somebody. Guys, this is a house of God, and I see hands. I'm not going to call you out, but I saw hands. 
We all have made excuses, whether it's work, whether it's school, hanging out with people, like we all make excuses, right? I'll, I'll, forget, I'll never forget, Chantel and I were dating, and I had another accident. I, you know, coming home late from her house, I had another accident. I knew I couldn't tell my dad that I had had another accident, okay? And so I called Chantel, and we ra- arranged it to where I got her car, right? And I took my car to a, a friend of ours that owned a body shop in his backyard, and, and so my dad started noticing me driving Chantel's car, and he just asked, and I said, oh, my, my car's in the shop. You Come on, somebody. I ain't, it's in the shop. I didn't lie, but you know, how many of those excuses turns into lies? Come on, somebody, right? Yeah, we, when we're trying to get out of something, right? My, listen, we have all made excuses. I even used her money to pay for my car. Come on, somebody. And I don't think I ever paid you back. But you mine now, so it don't matter, right? It don't matter. <clears throat> Like, listen, how many knows we've all made excuses when it comes to people, right? But my fear, though, is that we have become too comfortable making excuses to God. And so here's the goal of, of, of the series, and today this message is titled, the series is called Excuse Me, but I want us to change from excuse me to use me. Everybody say use me. If you take the first three letters out of excuse, it's use, right? Use me. My prayer today is to stop all the excuses because every morning you wake up, you're going to have a brand new opportunity to bring forth another, uh, another opportunity for a brand new excuse, right? And I just want to say, not God excuse me, but God use me. And so the big question today that I want to leave you with is, does God have your Yes. Does God have your yes? Because all of us know sometimes he don't. All of us know that we want to say yes, but sometimes we can't say yes. And I want to take you to a verse of Scripture, going to look at a story in the Bible, several people who made an excuse to Jesus. Luke chapter 14, 16 says, Jesus replied, a certain man was preparing a great banquet and invited many guests. Pause for a moment. He's just using this as a story, really like a metaphor of of what we find in in Revelation of the marriage supper of the Lamb, what was to come, right? Uh, You know, it's not just some party he was inviting people to. This was the marriage supper of the Lamb that he's referring to. Like when Jesus and the church comes back together, he's talking about following Jesus and eternal life. Verse 17, at the time of the banquet, he sent his servant to tell those who had been invited, come, for everything is now ready. But they all began to do what? They all began to make excuses. The first said, I have just bought a field and I must go and see it. Please excuse me. Have you ever noticed sometimes how stupid our excuses can be? You ever thought about that? Like they seem logical, but they're so dumb. Like this dude bought a field. Like you didn't know already you bought a field? Like like what are you going to do? You already own it. You've already signed the bank papers. Right? Like, why can't you go tomorrow and see this land? Come on, somebody. Here, another one said, I have just bought five yoke of oxen, and I'm on my way to try them out. Please, excuse me. Like, that's like saying, I just bought a new car. Well, how'd you get it home? Right? I need to go drive it. Can't you drive it tomorrow? <laughs> Verse 20, still another said, I just got married, so I can't come. Now it's getting personal. Come on, somebody. The servant came back and reported this to his master. Then the owner, who is Jesus in this story, of the house became angry and ordered his servant, go out quickly into the streets and the alleys and the town and bring in the poor, the crippled, the blind, and the lame. Right? Like, go get everybody. Sir, the servant said, what you ordered has been done, but there is still room. Then the master told his servant, go out to the roads and the country lanes and compel them to come in so that my house will be full. Listen, ladies and gentlemen, today in 2023, Jesus still wants his house full. Jesus still wants heaven to be full. So he tells his servants, who is, who's the servants in this story? It's us. Right? He tells us, like, if you have became a follower of Jesus Christ, if you've surrendered your life to Jesus, you are the servant in this story. And our job is to go and do what? Tell others about Jesus, right? 
And listen, if you don't know Jesus and if you've not made him the Lord of your life, then you are the one that is being invited to this banquet, right? You're the one, you're the, the one he's inviting. Verse 24, I tell you, not one of those who were invited will get a taste of my banquet. If you didn't show up, you ain't going to taste my banquet. And so this, I, like, like this whole idea that, oh, everybody's good, like you can live the way you want to, everybody's going to heaven, we're all good, right? You know, everybody's going to the same place. No, they won't. No, heaven and hell are real. Like hell is not a place that God made to send people that he's mad at. Hell is a place that people go to to pay for their own sins. And God says, you don't have to. I don't want you doing that. I've paid for your sins myself. Right? Are you hearing me, everybody? You getting this? Like, like, and we just got to make up in our mind that we got to recognize and understand there should be some urgency around this whole idea that Jesus has given an invitation. And I've got to be willing. Like, does he have my yes? Does he have my yes? Like, every one of us have made excuses. And because there is a day that's coming that those who reject Christ is not going to be able to come to his banquet, like we've got to make sure that we're doing our part. Like my heart as a pastor, I don't want you to miss it. I don't want you to miss out. I want to take as many people as we can to heaven. And that's why we're trying, like, like it's not about just seeing how many we can get to come here on a Sunday. We want to take people to heaven. We want people to say yes to Jesus. Praise God. We don't want nobody to miss out. How many likes missing out on fun? Like I don't want you, I don't want to miss out on fun. Like I remember Chantel is, you know, she would take the kids and her and the kids would go to her mom's every once in a while uh, without me and I'd have to stay back and work. And I, I didn't like no minute of it. Come on, somebody. Like if you're having fun, I want to have fun. Come on, somebody. <laughs> like if you're having a good time, I want to have a good time also. Like here's the problem. Jesus has invited the entire world to follow him, to be saved from their sins, to have a purpose and to live this everlasting life. Many of us, many people take that first invitation, yes, God, I believe. But then when it comes to fo actually following or not following, uh, excuse me, uh, not today. Uh, I got too much going on. Uh, I'm too busy today, right? Like, and there, there was a poll in America that was taken that actually shows like every American makes about six excuses per day. So you got a few left uh, and it's still early enough in the day. <laughs> like that equates to over 2,000 excuses a year, right? 2,000 excuses every American makes just to justify their decisions of what they've done and what they haven't done, right? Like, we make excuses for everything. We make excuses why we eat too much. We, ate, we make excuses why we don't work out. We make excuses why we don't eat healthy. We make excuses why we're not doing what we committed that we were going to do in January with all those goals we set. Come on, somebody. Like, like, and I know that Ken and my son is back there on the life. Like, I know his, like, he's, he's double. It ain't six for him, it's 12. Because he's got an excuse for everything. Like, his room's messy. It's, it, it ain't his fault. Come on, somebody. Mm -hmm. Like, enough with the excuses. Enough. Like, like we make them for everything. And, and, and in fact, we self-manipulate ourselves sometimes to tell ourselves, I, I deserve this, right? Like, if you look at the psychology, there's actually psychology that's, in, that's behind excuses and why they say that we <clears throat> use excuses. Research shows that excuses are tied to guilt and shame. Think about this, right? Watch this. What happens is you make an excuse and it shifts the blame to where it doesn't attack your self-esteem like it would have if you didn't do an excuse. So, like, like I can say, man, I'm, I'm so busy. I, I'm, I didn't make it to your birthday party. I'm so busy. That takes, like, it changes the perception of me. And it's a whole lot easier on me to say, I'm so busy, I didn't make it. Instead of saying, really, I'm just a low down, sorry, scumbag of a friend that I didn't come to your birthday. You know what I mean? Right? Like, like so, so we turn around. How, how many ever get an, an excuse and an apology, Right? Right? It just makes us feel better. Traffic was horrible today. 
Well, that's an easy one. We live in D.C. Uh, you know what I mean? Come on, somebody. <laughs> but how many know sometimes we say a traffic, people know tra- tra- you didn't have no traffic getting to that meeting at 6 o'clock in the morning. Come on, somebody. <laughs> like, you, you woke up late. And you walked in the meeting late with a Starbucks in your hand. Come on, somebody. <laughs> so you had time to go to Starbucks. Oh, come on now. Watch this. It's interesting because it protects me. The perception that people have of me. I love Jelvin. We went to a wedding a couple of weeks ago, Jelvin and Diana, and, and uh, I love what they did. They told everybody, we, the wedding starts at 3.30. And so we got there at 3.30. Man, we were ready. And I started looking around. Boy, there's a lot of empty seats. You know what I mean? And I'm waiting and I'm waiting and waiting. And then I look at the program. And the program said 4 o'clock. They removed the excuse that nobody was going to be late for their wedding. Come on, somebody. It was awesome. So, like, 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 listen, we carry the same mentality in our walk with God, though, right? Like, I'm afraid that most of us live in this perpetual land of excuse land. Like, I've got an excuse for everything. Like, if, 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 I'll follow you, Jesus, if it don't cost too much. Like, like, if you will meet, like, if you don't take this away, I'll give you my yes. I, like, like the, the, if you're not just overly taxing, like, if you'll give me some guarantees here, I'll say yes. And that's totally the opposite of of the mentality of of people like the Apostle Paul in the New Testament that 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 he just like his yes was yet like yes God yeah whatever you want me to do yes for Paul it was yes like it was no matter of look maybe or maybe tomorrow no it was yes today it was yes tomorrow it was yes for like forever yes yes I'll do it like even if they throw me in the, in the arena with lions, if they beat me or whatever, like it's a yes for me. And some of you are like, well, Mark, what are you trying to get me to say yes to? Come on. I'm just saying we need everything, say yes to everything Jesus. Say yes to everything Jesus, right? Just yes. Let me let, me, let, me let you in on a little secret, and I don't know if you know this or not, but it's not getting any easier out there for the believer. It's not getting easier for us. It's getting harder, right? Like, and you got to have a, you got to have a yes today and you got to have a predetermined yes tomorrow because we're being faced with so much. The world is going nuts. This country's going nuts. Our politicians have gone nuts. And I hope one's not here, but (laughs) you know what I mean? I just, um, not, it's going nuts. And you got to, we got to be able to know, like, what do we believe? Yes. I say, yes, God. Yes. Paul said, I counted my life as a loss that I might win Christ. So I want us to look, we're going to look at some heroes in the Bible. Like if you look at the heroes of the Bible, like where would they have been had they not given God their yes? Think about this with me, right? Like, it's not like people in the Bible didn't make excuses. Right? And I'm gonna, we're, we're going to unpack some in this, in this series, but, but because even though they gave an excuse, we see that God turned their excuse around and actually used their no and turned it into a yes so that he could get the glory through their life. So that he could get the glory. And, I, and can I just tell you today, you know when I'm most grateful for doctors, and I'm always thankful for doctors and nurses, and thank God for the profession that you went into. You know what I'm most thankful for them, though? Is when I'm sick. Come on, somebody. <laughs> right? And you know what? You look at this world that we live in now. This world is hurting. There's people that are needing Jesus. This world needs a church that's not so asleep, but that's awake, awake. <laughs> That's on point, that's on mission, and in this season when, where we're all doing the work of the ministry. Well, Mark, I thought that's why I come to church. Uh, you, you're, you're the minister. No, I'm the equipper. You're the ministers. God is equipping you. And there's a guy in the Bible by the name of Moses. Some of you, maybe this will be a review. Others, it's going to be, you know, maybe you've never heard of Moses. But the big question today is, does God have your yes? And then I want to just go a little deeper with that. Like, does God have your yes without conditions or addendums? Right? Because it's a whole lot different to say maybe. And when I just say Yes. Exodus chapter 3, verse 1. Now Moses was tending the the flock of Jethro, his father-in-law, 
the priest of Midian. And he led the flock. I'm going to read through this very quickly. It's in your notes, um, Exodus 3, to the far side of the wilderness and came to Horeb, the mountain of God. There the angel of the Lord appeared to him in flames of fire from within a bush. Moses saw that though the bush was on fire, it did not burn up. So Moses thought, I will go over and see this strange sight while the bush does not burn up. When the Lord saw that he had gone over to look, he, God called to him from within the bush, Moses, Moses. And Moses said, here I am. Do not come any closer, God said, take off your sandals, for the place where you are standing is holy ground. Then he said, I am the God of your father, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. At this Moses hid his face because he was afraid to look at God. The Lord said, I have indeed seen the misery of my people in Egypt. Like he's talking about the two plus million people uh, in, that, that were slaves in uh, the Israelites in Egypt, right? For 400 years, right? Notice, he didn't go into a talk about and have a discussion about Moses' life of what Moses did, like why was Moses in the, in the wilderness in the first place? Like you murdered a guy back in Egypt, like he didn't go there. Which leads me to believe, and I'm so thankful for it. Jesus is more interested in my future than he is my past. He's not worried about where you've been, he's worried about where you're going. How many is thankful for the grace of Almighty God that he came to seek and to save those that were lost? And there's people out there that's hurting and misery and they need a Savior. And we have the answer. I have heard from them crying, God said, out because of their slave drivers and I am concerned about their suffering. So I have come down to rescue them from the hand of the Egyptians and to bring them up out of that land into a good and spacious land, a land flowing with milk and honey. So now go. Everybody say go. go. So now go. I am sending. Who's he sending? You, I am sending you, Moses, to Pharaoh to bring my people, the Israelites, out of Egypt. To which Moses is like, excuse me? What did you just say? But listen, God, <laughs> hold on. Like, I've seen the misery. We know the people are hurting. We know the people, are, they need to be delivered. We've been waiting for you to do this. Not me. And God says, no, I've seen. No, I've heard. I'm concerned. No, I'm going to rescue them, but I'm going to use you. And God is telling everybody in this building today, I'm going to use you. Like I've called you. I've saved you. I brought you to move church today to save you, to redeem your soul, right? But that fifth one is the one, like we're okay with all the first four, but man, that fifth one, uh, we, got, we struggle with that one because we all wonder sometimes, like, does God even see what's going on in my life? Like, does he even hear my prayers? Like, does he, like, is he even concerned about what I'm going through, what my family, like, like, like is he ever going to rescue? Like, but man, when he calls, well, I'm going to do it through you. Everybody say, through me. God's called me. Not to give him an excuse, like not excuse me, but God use me, God, whatever it is. And so here's the question, like God showed up in a burning bush. Come on somebody, God's talking in a bush. You better listen, come on. <laughs> and if that bush is burning and, and, and it ain't, like if it's on fire and it ain't consumed, like you, uh, you better listen. But here Moses is arguing with God. Had to burn a bush. Here, here's the question. Does God have your attention? Let me put it another way. What else does God have to burn up to get your attention? Listen, the world's on fire right now. Like you don't have to be so in tune. Like you, like you see it on social media. Like there is so much that's coming against us. And it's like rapid fire. Every day is something new and something crazier. And we got to make sure that we understand that like an excuses can continue. Oh God, I'm not ready. Oh God, I can't do this. Oh God, no, I can't do this. No, 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 no. And I'm telling you, God is trying to wake his church up to help us to realize that as we come out of summer and we head into fall, we got to make sure, God, my, it's a yes. Like, yes, whatever you want to do in my life. Yes, I say yes. 
I say yes. Listen, I'm not going to take time. I don't have time to read through, uh, uh, you know, his excuses. But boy, did they start flowing out of his mouth. Like, like one of the excuses that he, or the first one he said is, who am I? And listen, that's a good question. Like many of you, mo, uh, it's very important for you to understand your identity in Christ. That you're not who you used to be, but because of Jesus Christ and his sanctification and his blood, he's bought you. You're not your own. You've been bought with a price. Moses is here struggling in the middle of the desert. God, you got the wrong guy. And God's response was, I'll go with you. I'll go with you, Moses. I'll go with you. Like, Moses, it's not about you. It's about me being in you. Here's another excuse he gave. Who are you, God? Like, like, like if they ask who you are, who do I say that you are? And this is a big problem that we all face, right? Like, many of us are here, maybe we're a lot, maybe we're believers, but we don't know God well enough to describe him to others like you know him, but if somebody was to ask who he is, you would struggle with giving an answer or inviting. And that's why we here at Move Church, we say, man, get in in track, get on a crew, serve somebody, serve people, get in a small group, do a discipleship class, do like, do read your Bible because if you read and you, you will discover who he is, here's God's response. Tell them, I am that I am has sent you. I am that I am. Here's another one, excuse. He said, what if they don't listen? You ever thought that when you, oh, God, I want to invite that person to church, but what if they don't listen? Well, you know what? A no is a no, right? But what if they do? What if they do listen? What if they do say yes? Hey, I'll meet you. I'll meet you at church next week. How many knows there's hurting people that like, you will meet people this week, you will cross paths with people that are going through difficult things and they need the help of a God that's able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we can ask or think. And God has called you. He wants to use you. God's response to what if they don't listen is when I'm finished, they'll listen. Here's another excuse he gave. I've never been a good speaker. God's response to that, who made your mouth? (laughs) Who made you? Here's another one. Just use someone else. Use someone else. How many knows if we all use that same excuse, just use someone else? Just use Pastor Mark. How many knows there's people that you're going to meet this week that I'll never have the opportunity to meet? Like if we all just say to use someone else, it's easy. It'd be easier on us. How many of you ever walked through your house before, go into your kitchen, and the, and the sink <laughs> is just overflowing? Come on, somebody. <laughs> like, and they've had to get creative to take that cup and put it on a fork. Come on, somebody. <laughs> Just to get room in there. How many know? How many knows? You walk in. Someone else will do it. Your siblings walk in. Oh, someone else would get it. It will eventually get done. How many knows that it's not going to get done until somebody, a mom or a dad, somebody takes the responsibility to do it? You know, God's response to just use someone else is, okay, I'll use someone else. I'll send you, I'll give you Aaron, your brother, but I'm still going to use you. You're going to still be, be used. And I'm just trying to bring your attention to the understanding. Exodus 4, as I close and the musicians prepare to come, then Moses went back to Jethro, his father-in-law, and said to him, let me return to my own people in Egypt to see if any of them are still alive. Jethro said, go, and I wish you well. Moses and Aaron brought together all the elders of Israelites. 
And Aaron told them everything the Lord had, had said to Moses. He also performed the signs before the people. In verse 31, what does it say? And they, they what? They believed. And when they heard that the Lord was concerned about them and had seen their misery, they bowed down and worshiped. Moses was able to be used of God because he turned his excuse me into use me. And God was able to take his excuses and use them for his glory. And so I just want to close with the understanding, does God have your yes? Does God have your yes? Like what is God asking of you? What is God tapping you on the shoulder? Like even in the middle of this message, look at me. Look, what, what has God been saying from the start of this message? What have you been excusing? That God is saying it's time to stop the excuses. It's time to stop. How many likes waiting on people? If I have a weakness, I don't like waiting. I don't like waiting. I want it done, I want it done now. Let's get it done. I hate it when people put me on hold. Put me on hold. You have to hear that stupid music. <laughs> the other day I was on there, and I guarantee you it was close to an hour. And then all of a sudden it just blah. It's very clear. Like how long are we going to make God wait before we give him our yes? How long? Like it's very clear what he's asking of us to do. He said, I want you to be the salt and the light of the earth. I want you to be the salt and light. Like you're, you're the hands and the feet. Like he wants to work through you and me. How long are we going to make him wait? Every head bowed. Can you just take a second and ask God, God, what are you trying to say? What are you trying to speak to me in my life in this moment? What are you saying? And whatever he's saying, don't give him any more excuses. Don't let it be a maybe. Don't let it be a perhaps. Yes. Some of you, God's been dealing with you. There's areas of your life that he's been speaking, you've been ignoring. Would you just say yes today? Every head bowed, every eye closed. There's some of you here today that you've never made a decision. You've never said yes to what Jesus did for you on the cross. You've been living on your own strength and in your own ability and in your own power. And God has brought you to this house today. And today is your day to say, yes, I'll follow you, Jesus. 
yes, I will submit, I will surrender my life to you today. No one's looking around. This is a private moment, but just between you and God. But if you're here and you need to make a decision, maybe you need, it's your first time or you just need to make a decision to come back to Jesus, would you just lift your hand and say, Mark, would you include me? Would you pray for me today? I want to make that decision. God bless you. Come on, would you raise your hand? God bless you. And God, I'm making a decision. I'm saying yes. God bless you. You can put your hands down. Would everyone stand to your feet? going to pray a prayer together and I invite everybody to pray with us but if you're making that decision if you're coming to Jesus come on I want you to declare this prayer I'll lead you but you declare it let it make it your prayer come on let's pray Jesus thank you for loving me thank you for dying on that cross today today you have my yes. I say yes to your will. Forgive me of my sins. I say yes. Be my Lord. Be my Savior. In Jesus' name. And everybody said, amen. Can you put your hands together? Amen. Praise God. Praise the, Lord. Praise the Lord. I invite our prayer team to come. We're always here to pray with you at the end of every service. If you have a need, if you want to connect in faith and prayer with someone, we're always here to pray with you. If you just made a decision to follow Jesus or bring your, you know, commit your life, recommit, made a recommitment today to Jesus, we want to hear from you. We want you to let us know who you are because we want to give you some next steps to help you on the journey. And so there is a connect card in front of you, the seat back in front of you. Take a moment, fill your name out. Let us know how we can connect with you. We want to send you some next steps this week to help you on that journey. Amen. Come on, let everybody say yes. No more excuses. Yes today. Yes tomorrow. God, you've got my yes.